Okay, how's everybody doing? So this particular tutorial, I'm going to close out the whole tree series and in terms of the vertical scenery that I've been covering sporadically throughout the content of the channel. Now, for those of you that are new to this, please look under videos and scroll back. You'll find tons of tree tutorials. Uh, I have the method that I've developed from other techniques from other modelers over the years. I never invented this. I've combined a lot of the methodology that I was trained in film and in museums to apply to this. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is the way I do it, and I have good reasons for doing it this way. Namely, just uh, uh, just to close before I move into the tutorial, like all of these limbs are wire. All, like the whole trees are made of wood, solid wood, and wire armatures, and static grass and foam, and they're sealed later with matte medium and or acrylic. So they're super robust, right? So I can whack them, bump them, bend them, shape them, move a limb, you know, all day long, and they don't fall apart, right? Like, you can say trees look good after five, ten years, but touch them and see. That's the ultimate test, right? Will they hold up? Will they hold their structure, or will they fall apart and shed all over your layout? And that's why I do this. Like, all these trees are sprayed with Vallejo acrylic matte medium after they're done. That way they don't shed onto my layout and don't get sucked up and vacuumed up into my rolling stock and locomotives. So that's the method to my madness, or the reason why I do it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover in this tutorial then some finer aspects of uh, root structure, bark texture, limb shapes, color application, flocking, and mounting. Uh, and that'll cover it all. That means all the trees that I've done pretty much the way I do it, have been covered except for one more species that I'll do later on down the road, which I already have in the can, which is the black cottonwood trees, which are huge here in British Columbia along the river. They too grow up to 150 plus feet high. And somebody had mentioned that a ways back and I don't forget, like I remember stuff, right? So I've done this before where somebody has made a request and they've been patient. So I did do a, a small short tutorial on black cottonwoods, right? Like a, the, the deciduous tree species, which I'll upload a little ways down the road. But until then, let's move in because this is kind of exciting. And uh, it sort of wraps up the whole vertical scenery tree subject uh, on River Road. And then I can move forward into all the other exciting content that I want to share with you as well.
Okay, so here's another way you can twist up limbs or uh, detailed tree branches. In this case, I just took uh, pieces that were about uh, 12 inches long, folded them in half, and just split them, just wound them up an inch and a half or so, and then just divide them up, spin the wire, and then leave some on the ends like this. Okay, and then these are just dipped in uh, LePage's carpenter glue, 50-50 water glue, and then sawdust. Sprinkle sawdust. They make nice limbs, I eh? see. See that? And they go quick, too, once you get a whole bunch going. You know, I mean, you got to put a little bit of time into them. This is easier than building them right onto the tree, like I showed you how when you spin up trunks. And then you make a whole whack of these branches like that. And then just dip the ends in the carpenter glue mixture or slurry. And then just 12 mil flock them a couple of times. Do them once, then do them twice, three times if you want. Just to get the branch structure or skeleton. And then paint, I want to paint these all brown and then reflock with probably seven mil, two mil or foam or whatever. And then I can clip the end of this part here that was folded, right, and twisted, you know, when it's first, excuse me, you know, when these are bent over the pliers like this normally, like that. And then once I get the next piece started, you know, the next branch, and so on. I just leave that loop there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to step into dressing this old growth tree here with some old growth limbs. Uh, you know, when they get this old, these trees, like this tree is probably, oh, I don't know, 300 years old or so. Uh, it's modeled after one here in town, a big spruce on the corner. And uh, so I have a lot of good photo reference, so I'm trying to build it as close as I can to the prototype tree. And you can see where all the flocking on the wire armature and the sawdust bark is paying off, right? So, and the fact that these are all wire armatures, uh, almost like a stop motion puppet, you know, when you think about it. Um, I, like, I imagine you could bend them, like eventually they would break if you put a lot of hard time on them, but that won't occur with a model like this, so. Um, and you can see, like, here's an example of one. All right, all the flocking. That's why I showed earlier on, like in some of the tree tutorials, uh, if you've watched them, then you would know how to do this by now. And so you can use this, like these are much easier. You just spin this, like in a similar way with the wire, like a deciduous tree. And then, you know, basically I can either squeeze down or, or retwist, just finish twisting off that loop So it turns into a pin that'll take glue well because of the multiple strands. And then I drill and then insert, like in this case here, there's a hole here. I would insert it like that. You can epoxy it or see it because it's going to get sculpted like the join here. I'm going to re-sculpt that in so there's a bit of a flare there. Okay. Okay, so I just epoxied these in. You can see they're just a five minute epoxy. It creates a bit of a flare to the trunk, which is kind of nice. Cleans that up a bit. And then I epoxied this one here. It just helps to hold better because, you know, with model railroads, you know, they go through quite a bit of abuse in terms of uh, expansion and contraction. Just the nature of the lighting and where they're built, you know, and uh, 
dip all the multimedia metal and wood so you get expansion of attraction so things can joinery can take a beating. I just find epoxy just ensures a better bond there. Okay, so I want to talk to you about candelabra trees, which are very common with old growth trees. Most people don't notice them because they don't study trees, right? But every old growth tree has them. Spruce do, Douglas fir do. Spruce, they, well, it depends on the tree, you know, like they're all unique. Uh, Western red cedars have them, see? Limbs that come out from broken tops, a lot of times they break off and then they start to grow up and create a new crown. This one has quite a few. It's got three. It's got two here as well coming off this limb. Here, look, see? And then there's one on the side here. And then there's another one. There's quite a few on this tree. There's five or six. I'll be putting another one on here. And then uh, here's a just a limb that's, well, you can see, like on the prototype tree, it actually curls up at one point. You can see it starting to happen there. But anyway, um, I just want to show you um why you know like another advantage to building wire armature trees like this is um was 26 gauge so i use 22 24 26 on my two favorites over 18 inch stem wire whereas this was 22 gauge with 28 gauge jeweler's wire for the small tree and then it was sawdust as well but with matte medium and look how you can bend like see how you can bend it and it doesn't flake off right it doesn't break all right if you try that with carbonous glue it'll just crack and flake off usually because it's so hard and um, I don't use Mod Podge I used it so long ago for just scenery ground scenery but I don't use it to dress limbs and trees because I want to use the best and I find Liquitex and matte medium to be the best for the money I think Golden is pretty good too but I would probably take Liquitex. It's a bit cheaper and it's professional quality for artists. So that's why I use matte medium, see? It's flat and it's flexible. So, and then you'll notice how when I spin the wire here, like that's to hold the tree, you know, when you're building the tree, when you're winding it. Like this would make a nice end scale tree, but of course in HO, I'm gonna use it as a candelabra, like this tree right here, see? So what I do is I just unravel this wire and then I can drill a hole and cut this at any length or double it up. I'll probably double it up just to make it stronger. And then um, I'm going to drill a hole in this tree. And then I'm going to insert it. And then I'm going to clean up the butt or the shoulder of the tree into the side of the tree like this with golden fiber paste. Opaque medium that dries to a fibrous texture. That's how I did the texture on this trunk okay it's water-based it's just beautiful stuff and it's just it's like cake icing but it sticks nice to the brush comes away from the brush it's just so beautiful like to work with um that, i don't know any other term to use really uh you know for this because it, it, like um it's just like for modeling like uh in this manner, especially trees, this stuff, I don't know how you could do without it, but we used to use uh, um, some of the fast mash, you know, back in the day, like paper mache, but uh, this stuff is superior to paper mache. It, it's more expensive, but I don't use it for large projects, right? For large trees, I'll just use sal clay. Okay, so that's the, the, uh, the reason for that. 
And then as I mentioned before, like it gives you the ability to have them, you know, growing off of a bit of a slope, you know, or out from a rock. Like these little details that you add really add to the scene. You know, they're things that we overlook, but they really make a difference on the signature scene, you know, little things like that with a finished trunk. And then since I'm on this topic, um, I just want to show you uh, one other feature. Uh, this is heavily flocked. It needs to be massaged away. It's with sisal. This is sisal rope. Very cheap, unraveled sisal rope. But I need to massage all the majority of that away. But see how I ran wires like I rewound, made this trunk thicker with sawdust. I covered up all those new pieces of wire and I wound them down to create a root system. See? That's just with sawdust and matte medium. And look how I can bend. See how I can bend the roots? Like I could have this growing off a rock. Like you know how they'll do that? Or, or, or a tree will grow off of a log, a fallen log through here like this. Well, that's how you can model that, see? The matte medium was sawdust, you know, and the wire, like, impregnated in. It's just such a... I mean, every modeler artist needs to use this because, you know, it's to your advantage, right? Okay? Okay, so we want to mold this stem here, this can candelabra tree. See where the wire has been epoxied in. Some of them are in tighter and they almost don't need it, but we'll touch those up too. But this one here, I'll show you what you can do with uh, this golden fiber paste, okay? So I just take a little bit on a brush. Like that. And I just... Lob it on there. It's kind of like toothpaste, this stuff. But it's really nice. You can sort of stab it around and move it around and build it up. And if you're not confident in doing it in one go, well, that's okay. Just uh, do, do one layer first and then let it dry. Put it away, work on another tree. Because this one I want to thicken up a fair bit. But this just helps blend the limb into the trunk of the tree. Okay, so I just want to mention briefly about uh, this uh, phase of uh, building a tree like this, in this case an old growth Sitka spruce. So there's been several flockings, uh, as some of you that have been following some of the series know. And you'll see here that I stabbed in another, um, let me just give you another a better look here, like another layer of uh, flock to really sort of uh, give it a little more body for the final flock. Now. This hasn't been massaged here, but I'll show you what I mean by that. And in this case, you'll recover a fair bit of it as well. That's the beauty of this static grass is it's, you know, reusable. I've re, you know, you end up with, you know, quite a bit of uh, static grass or flock that you can collect and reapply. So here you can see where um, it's already been like this is the second flocking uh, after these limbs were, were painted. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to massage and just tease them out. Just pull like this gives you an opportunity now to shape the wire armature. You know of the limbs so you can shape them any way you want. Right. You can start to define the character of the tree. Um, I'll come in here later with an airbrush of course and touch up some of these dead limbs. And to re-paint or feather out some of the branch work on here but um, like you can see here uh, this second flock on here really took well so with matte medium I just used straight matte medium stabbed in with the brush and then just pinched pinched in the 
static grass. So that's what I'll do. So I'll go over this and I'll just I'll massage it and tease it out just to knock off all the loose. And uh, then I'll have a really good um, tree to finish off with. Okay, and I'll probably use maybe 7 mil or 4 mil for these candelabra trees here. Because they're, they just need a little bit of touch up. And then I'll just uh, go over it with an airbrush and do the finishing touches on the tree. And um, I'm actually quite happy with the way this tree turned out. Should look pretty good as it anchors section two uh, on the next phase of River Road. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, fare in this root system into this vignette or diorama base that goes on the layout. And so I want this tree to be removable, okay? So I'm putting a piece of parchment paper down. And there's a bamboo skewer dowel that's mounted in this tree. And it goes into a hole, and under that hole is a little plywood slab, right? To hold this tree because these trees have you know they have a little bit of weight to them right it's got a wooden dowel core so you know you want the tree to sit nice right and then if I need to pull it out and remove it fine so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in here like this because Sitka spruce have these big prehistoric looking root systems the larger they get the more pronounced they become so I'm just going to stuff in some uh, toilet paper uh, just underneath here dry Okay, and the reason why I'm going to use dry is I'll show you because I'm going to pack this out with toilet paper, or pardon me, uh, that's what I'm doing right now, right, uh, with cell clay. Okay, and the toilet paper is dry, so it'll absorb some of the moisture uh, from the cell clay and help it dry a little bit faster. Okay, so I'm going to pack in some of the cell clay now like this and I have a little jar of water on hand because I don't want to cover up all this root system because it's already been painted so this cell clay I'll call it will be uh, you know the soil right. so I'll allow some of that root system to show Okay, so now that I've got all the cellular clay packed into the root system, I just take some water, nice clean brush, and I just work the cellular clay down, just stipple it in and just smooth it out. Clean out some of the cell clay off the root uh, structure that's already been modeled ahead of time, right? Because I don't want to cover all that up. I mean, I'll have to touch up with paint again down here, but... Um, you know, I want to keep that off the upper part of the trunk and let some of those big old roots show through. Then you can smooth it out and taper some of this out. Move it around a bit. All the shapes begin to make sense now, don't they? And when you see all the separate components, you wonder why is it round here? And, you know, things look odd. But once you start putting all the pieces of the puzzle into place on the vignette and the diorama it all begins to make sense because you're making a scene you're you're like an artist takes the real world and makes it better like that's what artists do like art like like in film right like would you like if you were to shoot a, a cinematic scene you're going to find the best locations in the world right that's why a lot of, you know, you know, movies like certain type movies, epic big films are done in Iceland because the landscape is just off the charts. It looks like it's out of this world, right? So, you you know, they can control that with the camera. So we do that with a diorama a, or a sculpture like this. You want to take the best of what you see in the theater of your mind and try to model it in to make that small area as big an impact as possible. That's the whole reason for it, right? Okay, so now I've pulled this tree from the top of the vignette, and I want to work this parchment paper off now, and it just pops off really, really easy. Like, it's, it doesn't stick at all, and you can see now I can just pull that aside 
and turn it over and you'll see it's still wet under here. So I'm going to leave that off so this dries some more. You can see the toilet paper, which I can pull out later if I want to. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it right now. And the reason why I'm doing this is because cell clay tends to curl up a bit when it dries like thin like this. So I'm just going to bend the outside perimeter of this flare down. Okay. That way when I put it back up onto the vignette base, uh, it'll fit down tight. I mean, I'm going to put static grass along the edge here anyway, just to blend into the existing terrain. So, but I just want to minimize any kind of gap that might show there. And furthermore, this will help it dry better. And as this bottom shrinks, it'll probably pull it down as well. But you can see I put some stones in and they're already really hard, like, you know, like no glue, just into the wet cell clay. So. That's why I really love this stuff. Let me just tell you this quick story that uh, when I used to build trees for the museum, like we had a big O scale sort of exhibit layout and it was designed to draw the public in and make the owner money. But uh, so he commissioned me for a year to do well, to oversee the whole scenery on it, but I had to build a lot of trees. So we made mold or I made molds for uh, three main trees just so we could cast them out of resin, you know, cause we needed thousands of trees. And like the bigger ones, we didn't need as many, but the smaller ones we did. But anyway, so I was trying to come up with an idea about, you know, trees. And I wanted to have them so that they're like this with a solid wooden core. You know, because it's so much easier to machine them and to drill into them and to fix a pin into them. And, you know, because of the just the commercial feel to the whole project. So anyway, we were sitting there talking one day and... You know, I decided that, hey, you know, like uh, there's a few pool cues in the back there. Can I use those? You know, because they already had a beautiful taper. And in O scale, they were already 160 feet, 180 feet high in scale. So he he went and <laughs> found like, you know, a bulk order of pool cues, right? <laughs> like hundreds of them. And uh, so we built a lot of the big trees like on pool cues because they had a beautiful natural taper to them anyway and because there was no ceiling valance or like no you know restricted valance a lot of them came to a point at the top whereas this one obviously I broke it off you know to make it look like a broken crown to fit up you know like in my layout right which is O or HO scale notice the trees are all wire so I can you know manipulate them all day long and they don't break the limbs don't break the tree doesn't shed right so anyway, that's what I'm going to do with that is just leave that off now and let that dry and just move on to some of the other trees that I have. Okay. So for those of you that have been following the channel, you probably know that, um, you know, about the wire armature, right? Okay. This is uh, 26 gauge wire, craft wire. You can get it at Michael's by the bushel. So you got to learn to twist wire. Uh, if you're going to do this kind of a model tree, uh, if you don't want to twist wire, then forget about it. <laughs> stick to whatever other tree form that you want and also I want to say that I've seen people like attempt this um, and you know they might be feel discouraged because they don't look like they want them to like this maybe or something well that's okay because it's the way mine looked <laughs> they all look like that when you first start out and then as you build more and more trees you just push them to the back but if you want to get to this kind of level of trees um, then you just have to put the time and just, just practice, like build three at a time or whatever, and just do a little bit at a time. And, uh, before you know it, you'll be pumping out really nice trees. Now, why do I do trees like this? Well, for one, um, they last the test of time. Okay. Um, if you build these, if you twist these out of wire and then 3M spray them, like I've heard people say, why don't you just spray them? Why do you go to all that trouble? Well, because I'll tell you what happens. And I have trees that are like what I'm going to describe. 
So if you go like this even, you just ruin the whole tree. Like you can't straighten them like the glue sticks together. Whenever you use 3M glue and you mix with different types of paint and static grass, the 3M glue will eat the static grass in a year or two. And you want to know how? Take some of your 3M sprayed trees, and I'm not knocking people that make them because they have a place on the layout. And then go like this and watch them rain down like a blizzard on a cold winter morning. Actually, you can probably strip the whole tree if you just massage it a bit. But if you do that with these, like when they're first fresh off the production line in that sense, they'll shed very minimal amount. And then once you flat coat them with a spray bomb like flat coat acrylic over acrylic based products, uh, it seals the tree and they're good to go for uh, decades upon decades. I know because I built them for museums like years ago, right? And there's so many different ways to do trees, right? Like, and they're all good ways to do trees to dress the vertical scenery element on our layout. But if you want to model some really uh, hyper or ultimate realistic looking trees in that sense, or old growth trees like this, um, you don't need that many. If you do a really good job of them, you know, you can put other stuff in behind, you know, trees and you won't even notice the ones back here. You just notice the one feature tree that you build. Okay. So, cause I use trees on Glover road, the first batch I made, which are practically falling apart. Um, I'm, I've tried to save them, but by spraying them down with, you know, Vallejo matte medium, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to really touch them anymore because it just becomes so fragile because of the incompatibility of the adhesives in the paint that's why that's why I use all water-based acrylics on everything because the compatibility factor people don't understand that maybe but one of the main primary reasons why we want compatibility with layers and layers of product is so that other layers don't eat or erode subsequent layers or previous layers and then cause rapid decay on the model okay so um, before i get started then and take you into some of the tutorial aspects of building these types of trees like you know that it starts off with wire right like the wire armature i have lots of videos previously that show you how you spin up these kind of trees okay and these kind of trees and these that i use for deciduous which are made just separately, you can combine together and then bend and shape them all day long, right? Because they're wire. With glue matte medium and sawdust for the bark texture okay now in this case you can see that I'm using them for cascading limbs like on the cedar why because I can bend them I can curl them up like if it's flat like this like they're built flat and then laid on parchment paper when I flock them like I'm going to show you all that but look how I can take these limbs and just curve them like, for example, like cedars have these long cascading limbs like that. How are you going to curl the ends like that? Like, how are you going to actually model the tree unless you build the tree out of wire, right? Okay. And then you can see where this is not, like the actual flocking, like in this case with the, the this limb, this is two applications of 12 millimeter static grass on the wire armature that's already been coated with dipped in matte medium, whatever uh, you can use carp glue but like I say I don't like to use it because it's brittle it cracks as soon as you bend and you go like this well it breaks and flakes away but if you do use matte medium 
or Mod Podge. Like it depends. Like I don't use Mod Podge, but I, it's a similar product or a derivative of matte medium. So if you're happy with Mod Podge and it's flexible like this matte medium is, then, then feel free to use it. You know, or confident to use it. Anyway, that's why I do that. So, like this isn't the actual green finished product. This is just limb structure. Right, that's why I spray these down so that they look like this. Right, so now I have a limb structure, right? And then when you flock them like this, you can see the beautiful branch work, right? Can't you? See that? That's what you want, right? So the dark branch work here is the base for your light green flocking, and it, it just has a look that's really unbeatable. Especially when you get up close to it. Okay. And then you can see like on this tree here. Uh, what I've done is um, I've basically just taken smaller trees like this. And put a bend in them and I turned them into a candelabra tree. Right. See. And then these limbs here which would make a great deciduous tree turned up this way becomes a big cascading limb on an old growth tree see so it all has a sort of universal application when you're in the groove of modeling trees right like everything works together and nothing is wasted like limbs that you're not happy with they'll be used uh, trees that you're not happy with they'll get they'll be used to push back and uh, if you just keep practicing and working on it, you'll end up with trees like this. It's just like anything. It's part of modeling the vertical scenery on a, on a model railroad. Most notably a shelf layout where you put a lot of your energy and creative process into a smaller footprint with a big immersive impact. Okay? Okay, so just to talk briefly then about this western red cedar and its progress so far. Um, you can see this is all a wooden dowel all the way through. And then what I did was to build up this fluted base, just to recap, I added some strips of balsa wood onto the, the symmetrical wooden dowel and then just sculpted it and, and created a bit of a taper before I added this piece. And then you can see I've added stem wire to create the fluted base, which is very common to western red cedars. And I used stem wire, a couple of different diameters of uh, 18 gauge stem wire there and some fiber paste and just lined it with tape on the inside just to keep it so it's like a web almost. Uh, this was already sculpted up before so I cut into it so I'll re, I'm re-sculpting it again so um, I'll just repaint it. So you can see so I've also added a candelabra leader but this is a fairly large one that would have started earlier on in this tree's life. Uh, I'll be adding another one or two up the top here. Uh, Western red cedars are like that. Uh, studies indicate that they tend to break off at the top often when they get old because of the water uptake uh, is, is rather limited uh, in the taller portion of the tree so they dry out and break off and then as a result you know you get limbs that come out and then they turn into candelabras and, be, and form a new crown on the tree so uh, it's something you don't normally see you know when we see photos of trees we used to see the bottom you know but I'm going to model that in because it's kind of a, a fun model of this cedar uh, even more of a, a boss tree than the one by uh, the entryway by the barge slip but this one's a little bit larger so but in reality uh, just to give you a quick scale on this like at the butt uh ho scale so this would be like uh 12 feet across you know which is not uncommon for large trees you know so you know 8 to 12 would be a real real uh massive old growth tree so